I grew up and was trained in a time where you know you made stuff, you know, like physical things, and I, I miss that. Ray Bradbury once said, the more you work with machines, the more you will become like one. And it's very different when you're dealing with objects and, and things and materials. On Jurassic Park, you know, the initial approach was going to be conventional. And simultaneously, Steve Williams, Mark DePay, and Stefan Fangmeier were trying to prove that a living, breathing character could be done with computer graphics. And they did this test with a Tyrannosaurus skeleton moving, took it down to Steven, and he went like, that's how we're going to do it. And that's where everything just went. The positive side of it, after I got incredibly depressed, was that was the inciting incident that like kind of kicked me upstairs. In retrospect, looking back, it's just like anything, you know, from warfare to like automobiles, uh, technology drives everything, you know. And with Star Wars, we applied the motion control technology to stop motion puppets, and we changed how all that stuff was done. And when computer graphics came in, it was another technological shift that that just changed the world. For my day job, I'm a consultant, visual effects supervisor, director. Mad God is, is, is kind of the, the antipode of my day job. I would characterize it as an experimental stop motion film. I actually started making it like 20, 25 years ago. Working with film was just such a pain in the ass that you had to get all this stuff right first. And then you were like, oh, it's like, eh, it was like disarming a bomb. It influenced a great deal by dreams. You know, my dreams, like most people's, are very like fragmented and kind of all over the place and nonspecific, you know, driven by anxiety. The way I think about this stuff is, is more experiential and less story driven. You know, I was about as savvy about VR as I really was about computer graphics. I mean, even even less so. For the VR project we were producing, Mike came and said, hey, you know, it would be really cool to do it with stop motion. I had just seen Mad God, which was this wild stop motion animation piece, unlike anything I had seen before. And the connection was immediate. It was like, I, I have to see puppets life-size in VR. We had one of those intuitive connections with Weaver. We heard that they were funding content made by artists, and we said, that's us, that's what we're doing. As we fell in love with VR, we actually realized that we want to make VR ourselves, but the only way to actually really have a rich language for a story, you actually have to collaborate. What we were interested in was, it was stop motion animation, it was Phil Tippett, and it was Kaleidoscope. And at that point, we were just like, yes, go ahead and do it. I do not think VR is the future of filmmaking. It's, it's the Wild West. It's like nobody knows nothing. The opportunity to experiment and try things that you haven't seen or you haven't imagined is like, it's just all out there. It's not story-centric, it's like action choreography. The two leading team members for the VR project are Alex Hessler and Chris Morley. And what they bring to the team is they know how to make it happen. I don't have a clue. We're all doing this for the first time. There's not really anybody that's done VR for years and has a lot of experience. So our team is full of people, including Phil, that have years and years and years of experience and a lot of ways to solve certain types of problems. As far as uh, VR at Tippett, this is a fairly new experience for us, um, but it's not our first experience doing something new. I actually wasn't sold until I saw the first test that we did for Mad God. <laughs> That may sound terrible, but seeing something created by hands, composited into something shot physically, it's really magical to me. Very quickly, I came up with a theater in the round kind of idea, since you're a kind of a disembodied, dreamlike entity in the middle of this 360-degree world. How do we compel the audience to play along? 
to say like, no, look at what we're wanting you to look at. Well, look at the cool thing we did over here. Well, it, it just meant changing how one approached the narrative because it took away all your editorial tools for telling a story, but it gave you else something that was really pretty cool, which was being able to direct by the location of sound in a three-dimensional sphere. Because it was shot in a certain way to where you felt you were the size of these puppets, was like truly amazing. It really is that first person dream world. It's all experimental, it's all really wild. I mean, it was kind of like that, you know, working for George or Steven really early on. What do you want to do what you've already done a hundred times before? You know, I understand, to make money, you know, to, you know, whatever. But my mind just doesn't go there. It's like, you know what would be really great is like an LSD VR thing. That would be like really fucking cool.